we're given the sequence a sub n equals n to the fourth divided by n to the sixth. We're asked to determine if the sequence is bounded or unbounded, determine if the sequence is monotonic or not monotonic, and then finally, determine if the sequence converges or diverges, and if the sequence does converge, determine the value it converges to. We're looking at our formula for a sub n, we can simplify this, notice how the bases are the same, and we're dividing, so we would subtract the exponents. So we can write a sub n as a sub n equals n to the power of four minus six, which would be negative two. Using positive exponents, this would be equal to one divided by n to the second. So we use this formula to answer our questions. To determine if a sequence is bounded or unbounded, let's review the definition of a bounded sequence. A sequence is bounded if it has an upper bound and a lower bound, meaning all the terms of a bounded sequence are between or equal to the upper bound and the lower bound. Looking at the graph of these two sequences here, notice how the upper bound would be a, since the value of the terms in the sequence are all less than or equal to a, and b would be the lower bound, since all the values of the terms in the sequence are greater than or equal to b. So in order for a sequence to be bounded, it does have to have an upper bound and a lower bound. So let's take a look at the first few terms of our sequence. Notice a sub one would be one divided by one squared, which would just be one. a sub two, the second term would be one divided by two squared or one fourth. And the third term a sub three would be equal to one divided by three squared or one ninth, and so on. So notice how the largest value of the sequence would be positive one. So it's bounded above by positive one, and as n increases, notice how the denominator increases without bound, but the numerator stays at one, so the fraction values approach zero, so we can say it's bounded below by zero. We could also say it's bounded below by a negative number if that's easier. Because it has an upper bound and a lower bound, we say that the sequence is bounded. A nice way to visualize this is to graph the sequence, which I've done here, and notice how we can see that the sequence is bounded above by positive one here, because all the values are less than or equal to one, and it's also bounded below by zero. These values never do reach zero, because remember we have a numerator of one when we simplified our sequence rule or this is equal to one divided by n squared. Now for the second question, we're gonna determine if the sequence is monotonic or not monotonic. A sequence is monotonic if it's always increasing or always decreasing. Here's an example of two sequences that are monotonically increasing, where a monotonically increasing sequence is a sequence in which each term is greater than or equal to the previous term. We can also have a monotonically decreasing sequence in which each term is less than or equal to the previous term. Which is what we have, we can see as n increases, the terms get smaller and smaller, and we can also see this graphically. Notice each term is less than or equal to the previous term. So we do have a monotonic sequence. Now the last question, we're asked to determine if the sequence converges or diverges, and if the sequence does converge, determine the value it converges to. Well, there is a theorem that says every bounded monotonic sequence will converge, but more formally we say, if a sub n equals f of n, and the limit as x approaches infinity of f of x equals l, then the sequence converges to l, and the limit of the sequence is l. So sequences that have limits converge, and they would converge to l, and sequences that do not have limits diverge. So using our simplified formula, we could let our function f of x be equal to one divided by x squared. If we take the limit as x approaches infinity of f of x, which is one divided by x squared, notice how, notice how this fraction approaches zero as x approaches infinity or as the denominator increases without bound. So if this limit's equal to zero, then the limit 
as n approaches infinity of a sub n, or one divided by n squared, is also zero. So we can say the sequence converges, and it does converge to zero. If we look at the graph one more time, we can easily see the value of these terms are approaching the x-axis, and therefore they would be approaching zero, which we did say was a lower bound of the sequence. I hope you found this helpful.